a, a Richard the Third line before he killed Sauron. I am not in the giving moon this uh, vein. I, I'm not like I, I'm not in I'm not in the giving vein this day. He should have killed uh, Karg because Karg is useless and he, he stomps and, he's, and he stops stomps not gnome gardens. Did right. you notice he's, that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Karg's dumb looking. He's Big supposed hair. to be. A, yeah, he's supposed to be a bat, especially with the initial designs. But it just doesn't. Um, succeeds at nothing in this movie. All Karg Karg does is go. Go, you idiots! Nothing. Go, run left. Go. Oh, yeah. he failed. Oh, you idiot! Go. Yeah, yeah. That's his. He's yeah. He absolutely does zero. He finds he's an informant for Evil Lynn at like the very most. He's the one who like finds Courtney Cox's character. Oh characters. yeah, the picture. This is the Arthling girl, and Evil Lynn's like cool we go and like yeah he does absolutely nothing evil lynn's a much better boss than skeletor meg foster crushes it in this meg foster crushes it in this i can't stand her because she killed keith david in what they live oh right well i can't get over it so notice uh, a thing about her costume she can't move her she can't move her neck so (laughs) apparently that head that headdress weighed about like 40 pounds and so when they would take it off of her, Meg's body would be covered in bruises all around her shoulder because it's literally like crushing her. Jeez Louise. That's, That's awesome. why like most of her stoic pain is like there. I'm hurting. <laughs> I'm legit hurt. I'm legit hurting. This sucks. Yeah, do you yeah, think, yeah. Do you think Leonardo DiCaprio copied that in The Revenant? <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you know when I see the Revenant. Okay, good. Because the whole time he's grunting, just... but he's in zero degree weather okay. and he's wet, so he's miserable the whole time. So it's not really oh. hard to act miserable. Okay, yeah. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, it doesn't seem. Yeah, I believe so. Karg stinks. Uh, Karg stinks, and it's funny because Stout worked on Sauron the most because if you know this about Stout, he really loves dinosaurs, and so with Sauron being reptilian and shit, you can tell like he had a blast. And even time, like, we were talking about, like, Saurad, he's like, ah, I got so mad he got killed off first. I worked so hard to nail his design. Go back and find some really cool, like, Saurad concepts. They're fucking weird. And they're kind of my favorite. Skeletor killed the wrong one. Skeletor, Keldor, you're just messing up here. Uh, You know what I like about Evil Lynn is she's like, we shouldn't kill any of them. They could help us later. And then when when that (laughs) Karg... The little brat brings that picture. She's like, cool, I'll use this later. And if she, if she yeah. did the same to Skeletor, Skeletor would be like, oh, you achieved everything? Well, where's my Gouda? Like, he's, right. he, like, he's that guy that nothing makes him happy. And, and then he's like, I'll have all the power. And Evil Lynn's just like, I got to get out of here. She doesn't understand, right? She thinks there's several points in this movie where they have a loving relationship and then he does something dickish. <laughs> uh, um, yep. I was not suggesting, yeah, she talks about we should lead a battalion. I was not just, I was not suggesting I go, then you shouldn't have spoken. Yeah. Like, damn, guy, like, she's just doing her job, question mark? And she was successful. She was successful. It's 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 what she was doing. She was complete boss. She's the one who got the key. She tricked Courtney Cox. God, what is her name? I'm completely flaking on her Told name right now. You. Uh, I know. Julie. Is, Julie. Julie. Because I know Kevin because I hate Kevin. Kevin is – I was like – I always thought as like a kid when Blade puts that uh, knife in the table, I always thought he put it in his head. And I was like, oh, that's how he dies. No, he doesn't die. Um, I always thought like he got really messed up <laughs> I got watching crap, it. I got the crap beat out of me. <laughs> right. He gets the sh- – he gets the dog shit beat out of him by Beast Man, by Blade, by Shock Troopers. Like, Kevin is, like, genetic cannon fodder for this movie. He is just, he is just beat up he constantly. He's very strong bone structure. <laughs> well, you know, he is from the Midwest. They make him pretty hunky out there. Yeah, so, he's yeah. stout. And he's a, was there supposed to be a party that night? Yeah, he, he's... No, it was a um, Prom? Uh, sound check. It was just Kevin sound. It was just Kevin sound check. How many people are going uh, to this show? Kevin and that music store guy. Because that's end. a lot of room. That's a <laughs> big venue. Right. I never really thought about it, but yeah, it just seemed like Julie was going to go. To, she was going to leave, and Kevin's band was just going to perform for something. I'm going to have to remember to see what the banner is because there's that banner at the top of the uh, top of the stage so before it lit on it's fire. Like, it's like summer, right? So it could be like summer fest. Right, I, I, it could be like end of the year, yeah. like uh, everyone's graduating and then leaving. So yeah, you know what's very smart about this movie that Godard 
push for the director mm-hmm. he wanted to have he built he bookended the movie in skeletor's palette because he's like we can't just be on earth and they had to shoot all night shoots to hide the budget because they're like you can't have he-man running around during the day that's stupid so they had all these night shoots and then they bookended in eternia and with that really great set which i thought was pretty beautiful but that's smart it is it is. Yeah, no, it, it definitely is, especially when um, you consider that the Earth scenes are the weakest part. I'm like, yeah, kind of. I wish the rest of this movie could be set on Eternia, but it's not, so. Do you know what they called Dolph Lundgren's sword? Well, and so in the movie, it's the Sword of Skull. Oh, they called it a Buick Slayer on set. <laughs> That's pretty great. Uh, I've seen it. I've seen it in person, and I, 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 can, uh, I can concur to that. Anthony DeLongis, I guess, who played Blade, he also did a lot of the choreography on this. He, he said, did. Yeah, he Tony. said that Dolph, he's like, Dolph's athleticism was insane. He's like, no other person on set could have handled the Buick Slayer like he did. And Dolph did a good job with that Buick Slayer. You're watching it, and you're like, this guy. And then also, uh, I read it at Slash Film, five-page uh, oral history of this, and they had the his dialect coach on, Dolph's dialect coach, and she said he worked yeah. so hard on his dialogue. So it kind of annoys me that Goddard is like, Goddard's like, yeah, it wasn't very good. There's one scene I liked with him and I took him out of it. But then here's Dolph working his butt off. Well, Goddard's also like hiding in China for like pedophile charges. Yeah. That's neither here nor there. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, I Anthony talking, Edward. I was talking to Stout about that because I was like, who has a lot of these originals? Because Nick Patera, who did Manhattan Projects, when that was option, he bought like a lot of art. So he has the He-Man design. Gary has the Skeletor. And the rest, I think, Stout has here and there. Who's got the Skeletor? And he's like, uh, Gary, which I'm guessing he'll have to sell at some point if he ever wants <laughs> to try to come back to America. Wow. I was like, oh, shit, that's right. And he's like, yeah, about that. So... <laughs> moving on holy yeah <laughs> he said that skeletor was one of the all-time great cinematic villains uh i agree really yeah i agree i i, I agree because it's for a few reasons one uh, i'm pretty sure you've done your research about langella and how he perceives this role and how it's still his favorite role of all time yeah he's reading joseph campbell uh, books in preparation for this well uh, yeah i mean he had like his grand you know his grandson rom- roaming around and um screaming i have the power so when the script came around and he's like, no question, I'll do it. There was a lot of improvisation that he did when he sees the mercenaries and he says a curious quartet. That was improvised. And it's such a good, like, hmm, curious quartet. And it's so, like, <laughs> it's so default Langella when you think about, like, you know, he's already played Dracula. Yeah, it, it'd be fine if he played Skeletor, and he did. He, he's definitely what makes this movie. It's his line. His line delivery are poetic. It's... I definitely put him up there with 80s villains, for sure. Put him up there for the for the 80s, definitely. Yes, absolutely. Who's better? All right, right. I, this is a serious question. Okay. Who's better? Okay. Frank Langella as Skeletor or mm-hmm. that guy Bennett in Commando? <laughs> Bennett! <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> welcome, welcome to the movies, films, and flicks. That's fine. That's a really good line. Oh, God, that's a really good question. I got to go with Skeletor just because of Shakespeare. I like Shakespeare. I can't think of, like, any really memorable, like, Bennett line. And I love Commando. It's, you know, in the Schwarzenegger 80s hierarchy, it's pretty low, but oh, it's yeah. not that bad. I figured so. out that 6,000 bullets missed him during the final gunfight. <laughs> oh, that's right. You did that. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> you. Uh, I, I forget you do that whole thing by the numbers. Yeah, I, um, I got some weird data. I just did the Dark Knight <laughs> cash pile, and that that went everywhere. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, like com- and I comic, recently just watched that too. Comic book picked it up, and then it got spread all over. And then some people kind of used it without re- linking back to me, and got a ton of views. But now it's out mm. there that it took them about twenty-seven hours, sixteen henchmen, twenty-seven hours to set up Joker's cash pile. That just seems insane. Well, it's so many bills. It's it's, it's it's in the billions, and they're stacks of $100 bills because I found the props. Oh, that makes sense. It's crazy. That makes sense. All right, let's we'll do something. Let's take a quick break. I'll, I'll let you read all of my articles, all 70 of them, and when we come back, we'll talk more Masters of the Universe, and we won't talk about my other articles, but at least you'll read them. Does that sound good? Yeah, that sounds great. All right, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Movies, Films, and Flicks. And we got to talk about that leg pus on Courtney Cox's leg in this movie. What would you think about that, Lan? <laughs> oh, from uh, Skeletor's uh, energy ray? Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that lasers uh, caused, it, um, caused immediate leg pus. 
Also, the yeah. lasers in this movie, they do different things. So Dolph shoots one of those stormtroopers in the chest, and the stormtrooper does a front flip into a hole. And then another scene, Dolph shoots a laser at the same, sh another shock trooper, and that shock trooper falls 20 feet back. Are those, like, reverse polarity lasers? What's going on with these lasers? A wizard did it. A w w there's a wizard who makes lasers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Gwildor's kind of a wizard, and he's a weaponsmith, so yeah. So the wizard, wizard laser? That's interesting. Yeah, why not? Why wouldn't he be? Wizard lasers. I like that. Blows my mind a little bit. So do you just set it on a different, hey, sh this, you shoot this guy with a laser and he falls forward and you shoot this guy with a laser and he falls back? Yeah. And then, you know, if they do different settings or whatever. So Mattel had this whole thing about like, you can't really kill anybody. Oh, wow. Wait, yeah, that Mattel, one... Mattel was really, Mattel was, yeah, Mattel was really weird about like killing, uh, for, for like He-Man killing people. Skeletor can kill people because he's the bad guy. But He-Man killing people is a really weird thing. Oh, jeez Louise. Yeah. yeah you... There's going to also be, like, this whole thing about Skeletor cutting off someone's head and then feeding it to... There's supposed to be a monster that lives... Okay, so you know, like, how a throne room, like the throne room is set up? Yeah. And, like, that pit where the skulls are in the middle? There was supposed to be a monster underneath that and uh, was going to come into play, like, in the third act when we go back to the throne room. But that was nixed because it was too scary. Jesus. No. It, well, it was, it was deemed too scary. Wow. That would, why would a monster be in there? Isn't Eternia, like, a chill place? Uh, no. Oh. Apparently not. Oh, okay. Because then they jump attack. He has, like, 14 troops and he took over Eternia. Right. So apparently it's not. Well, I mean, you got that in the prologue because let me see if I can remember it. For countless ages, the source of the Grayskull kept the universe in harmony. But the armies of darkness do not rest, though. That's the thing. And the capture of Grayskull, and this is important, are ever most on their mind. Yeah, they kind of like it, this is one of those movies that's always playing in my brain. I can do the whole movie pretty much. Yeah. We haven't even talked about Tila yet. We, we will get to Tila. Yeah. Chelsea Field. She said she was running around jumping on stuff for her uh, auditions, and she does some good. Uh, shrub, yeah. She does good shrub jumping in this. I learned how to shrub jump she by watching good. this movie. <laughs> yeah, she does. Obviously, you know they kind of went, went more like sci-fi armor based instead of like more barbarian based for what Tila and everyone was supposed to look like. Because Man at Arms looks very scientific the figure at least in the filmation in the cartoon he looks very scientific with his chest piece and his helmet and his like armor and knee pads and stuff and everyone you know they're all soldiers so yeah they, they are that's their that's their job like duncan is the sorceress's you know or the king's man at arms he is like the guard captain yeah and this one uh everyone kind of look gray and drab but it is what it is Goddard was talking about her in this movie, and he was kind of creepy about it. He's like, she's very, very beautiful. A beautiful body. I'm like, geez Louise. <laughs> don't be a creep. Yeah, I like, oh, why'd, you, well, why'd you have to put two varies in there? Like, she's, she's a dancer, and she, her athleticism was great for the role. Instead, he's like, uh Like, it felt like something was oozing off the screen, like, the page when I read that. I think Skeletor is a little like Ricky Bobby. Oh, God. Because if you're not first, you're last. First, you're last. Right, And Skeletor right. says, I must possess all. How do you feel about oh, that? Or I possess nothing. Yeah, right. He's kind of, I don't know if he's like Ricky Bobby. Is he more like an <laughs> absolutist? It's sort of, I, I don't know, because uh, he doesn't really feel, he, he feels like everything is his, but also he doesn't really have anything. Because he especially has that, again, like abusive boyfriend tendency of Evil Inn, you know, after all this time, Grayskull is ours. And it's like, no, it's mine, 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 mine. <laughs> And, and so they're like, chill, God, fine, I guess. Jesus Christ. I love how she ducks out uh, at the end. Yeah, well, wouldn't you? <laughs> like, peace, I'm done. This was a bad idea. I should have left you years ago, but I suck around for the kids. But, you know, I learned my lesson now. How long did it take that cop to find that space floozy and then be married? Zero, zero, zero hours. So they just uh, gave her to him. Yeah, she could have been a member of uh, Sorceress, Sorceress's court, but... I love the A, space bluesy. B, I love how she definitely, like, no, her big hair. She has to be from Earth, too, right? She's not? Oh, okay. Sure. Because, yeah, I guess. That guy does I nothing, guess. and then he's just given a woman. <laughs> Eternia, man. What a world. This place, the monsters everywhere and just giving people women. They're vegetarian, so hopefully that guy, like, doesn't, uh, you know, eat birds. He's going to walk around just murdering animals. <laughs> he's got to. He's got to eat. <laughs> but he also has, like, a low temper. But he's also super chill. Like, no, I don't have a, like, I guess he doesn't have, like, a family on Earth because wouldn't someone be missed? He's an active member of the police force. So 
Is, does he just go missing and everyone's like, where did this guy go? We don't know. Stupid question. They sent Courtney Cox back to the future, like to the past. 